Welcome to Iceland today, as we call this Thank program. Thank you. Good evening. Hope you had a nice flight. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm happy to be here. Um, you, of course, like I said in this introduction, you're a former president and, and before that, uh, Minister of Home Affairs in your, in your home country, Switz. Uh, how, and you became minister in 1993. How was the drug situation in, in your country at that time when you became a minister? When I became a minister, it was the main concern or one of the three main concerns of the population because suddenly they had, uh, they were confronted, the population was confronted with uh, two dramatic situations, emergency situation. On one side, the AIDS epidemic, and on the other side, uh, increase in drug consumption and very visible drug consumption with uh, a great... Uh, um, uh, marginalized population and the population at great risk. So, uh, and the link between both, because the, the epidemic of uh, AIDS was on one side also fueled by injecting drugs, uh, the injection of drugs. So, I mean, it was really a great, great uh, concern, and it was very visible because we had at this time these open scenes in, in big cities of Switzerland the people were concentrated in uh, some parks and some places, and you could really see them um, at the greatest risk, dying from overdoses, being ill, being marginalized. The drug users were in parks injecting and yeah. smoking yeah. and so on. And that maybe was uh, the wish of the police to... to Concentrate the, first, the, the, the first idea was uh, came from the police. Yeah, they said, "Okay, let us concentrate all the drug users in some place so we can control it better, and uh, the other neighborhoods of the city will be clean." Mm. I mean, we have now the same phenomenon mm. in other cities of the world. Mm. I was uh, some days ago in Brazil and they put all the crack smokers uh, in one place in Sao Paulo. When they understood that this was not the real solution, the real solution it didn't, is in the country to go to these people, to offer services, mm. to allow them to live normally mm. in normal neighborhoods mm. and to deconcentrate the problem, but not to make it invisible, not to make it uh, uh, underground. Mm. This was the terrible thing. I mean, we had a phase of underground mm -hmm. and this was terrible because the people lived really without services without help without ab being able to protect themselves mm. and to protect people their don't data, so to say. and afterwards we had the open scene which was also an error mm. now i think we found the good way and the good way is normal life normal services yeah, yeah, that's one thing you did as a minister you you took part in changing the policy, and how did that go on? We were how a did lot. You, how did you we change? Were, well, I think what is very important is to listen to the people who are directly concerned by the problem. The drug consumers, their families, but also the people working directly at the front, if I can say so. The police, the social worker, the medical personnel. You have to listen to these people, but also to bring them together. This is the, the duty, I would say, of a politician, is to create the platform where they can understand each other, renounce to say, my view is the best, you are making an error. At the beginning, we had this silly situation that the police said, if you have a, a syringe, even a clean one, this is the proof that you are a consumer. And the people who tried to educate the people and say, use uh, syringes that are clean, were just lost in their battle. So understanding each other, working together. I mean, for instance, in my city, in Geneva, we have a safe consumption room. The people can go there, they buy the stuff illegally, but there is one place in the city where neither the police nor the dealers harass them. It's the only place where they are very quiet and they can consume their drugs there under supervision. Mm. But the police is helping this system. The police is looking really that this place is the place where the people... Safe haven, so to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this understanding mm. was important and we were pushed huh, by by the people from, from the ground. I mean, mm. they ask us, they ask us to save life. Mm. 
And what is better for a politician to have the opportunity <laughs> to save life? I mean, the best thing. But there you must can have been do. some opposition, and you had to change some laws, didn't you? We had to change uh, laws, but we we were uh, in a situation that we could also experiment first and change the law afterwards. There are in many laws there are articles saying okay, or for instance also in the international convention. The scientific and medical use of substances is allowed. Okay? So we used this article and said, for instance, for people who are really not able to follow either an abstinence oriented therapy or the traditional substitution therapy with methadone, for instance, or Subutex, why couldn't we give them medical heroin? Mm. Because it's that. They are living with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try. For five years, we made a pilot project, but a very large one with more, I mean, mm -hmm. more than 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we could prove that no overdoses, no, no more. So the healthcare system actually gave them the heroin? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, gave. Yeah, okay. Provided a prescription, it. Yeah, a prescription, prescription yes. Under medical control oh. in a specialized clinic. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the result was so positive that the people at the end accepted to put this in the law. Mm. And how did it go in the referendum? Fine. Yeah. We well, had uh, big majority. <laughs> well, uh, two third, two I third. think. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I must say, this is a big chance for Switzerland because we had to vote on often on local level, mm. on cantonal level, on federal level on the heroin prescription, on the reform of the law. And uh, this obliged also the politician to, to, to speak to the people, to explain, to show that the scientific evidence is there. I mean, it's so important. If you take the citizen seriously, mm. you have to give a big importance to research, to evidence, Mm -hmm. to information. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the key for success. So uh, uh, what about because uh, drug users also uh, kind of uh, crimes thrives around, uh, around drugs? Did crime, you know, street crimes, did that reduce with, with your change in policy? Not really. And I must, I must say that uh, in contradiction with uh, countries like Mexico and so on, we European countries, at the end of the pipe, we have not a violent criminal scene, black market. Mm. I mean, it's a business. It's a sad business. I am against the business in criminal hands. Mm. But it is, it is a, a black market that is not disturbing, really, the life of the people. Uh. So the priority is really to, to try to diminish it, yeah. but not to make a big, big issue on that. The problem is more to, uh, I think, the step that we will have to do one day is to regulate the market. Yeah. That is to take it off the criminal hands, and this will have a result. Yeah, and now you are, you are part of your, uh, you are a commissioner with, uh, with the Global Commission on Drug Policy with a very impressive list of other people as, uh, as, uh, as uh, well, uh, commissioners. Yeah. Yeah. Kofi Annan, uh, Ernesto Cetillo, former president of Mexico. Uh, you have uh, George Papandreou, former prime minister of, of Greece. George Schulz, former, prime min uh, former uh, foreign minister of the United States, and so on and so on. Uh, after you retired as a politician, why didn't you just go fishing or something? Why, why going in this and try to convince the world to change the policy? Because uh, I feel it as a duty. I mean, I learned a lot in the 10 years. Uh, I was in charge of uh, health policy and uh, narcotic laws, among other things. And uh, yes, I, I feel obliged to just to share my, my experience and, and the knowledge. But it is not only that. I mean, why now? Because, because so many crimes are committed in the name of the war on drugs. Which is lost in your beliefs. It is absolutely lost. We, we didn't diminish the consumption. We didn't diminish the, the production. And the, this substance are harmful. 
but the policy against the consumption of drugs is more harmful than the substance itself. Here in Iceland, you will give a lecture and you will also meet some minister, among them the Icelandic health, health minister. Uh, and your message may be to them, uh, because this conference is coming up, big conference of the United Nations next year, which this will be the main issue. What is the message of, uh, of, the, of the Global Commission to, to the politicians of Iceland? In, in this? I mean, the first, uh, the first message is just break the taboo. Speak about this problem. Explain it to the people. Make research. So in order to have really an evidence about, I mean, there is such a ideology, uh, ideology around the drugs that we have to go back to the facts and we have to find a solution. So, so you're saying science, but not uh, superstition? Exactly. Science is so important. And when you know the, how the problem are in a country, you know what will be the next step. We, we will not change everything from day to one day to the other, but just answer to the problems of the people. The people need harm reduction. They need a large scale of treatment. They need to be not uh, discriminated in their professional uh, life, to find job, to find housing. They need, uh, for instance, not to have a criminal record just because they are consuming something without making harm to other people. So, I mean, there is such a lot of steps to do I would say to make a better society. Under the under the flag of, of the human rights. I think the the fundamental human rights were often violated in the name of the war on drugs. Um, and that will be the message in the United Nations next year. Uh, time flies quickly, uh, Madame Dreyfus. Uh, my time is over and I thank you very much for coming to this uh, program. As I was saying before, she just landed in Iceland. Uh, maybe two hours ago, so there was no time to uh, put subtitles on this interview right now. But the uh, interview will be later on up on our website with subtitles. Thank you. Thank you. And good evening. Thank you.